Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Malik Siduk, and I'm uh, I'm head of research at Ayrton. Uh, that is uh, a design house working in the field of the Internet of Things. We are in France, in Lyon, and we have some expertise in electronic design, RF, uh, wireless devices, uh, cloud application, also machine learning, and we are interested in uh, software-defined radio. And we are also doing research, uh, collaborative research, and we, the project that I will show you this afternoon is uh, a part of uh, part of them. So um, I will try to explain what our motivation why we want to use software defined radio, and I will introduce the Fed for Fire Plus H twenty twenty project and uh, the wireless uh, test bed. Uh, for uh, wireless device, RF and cognitive radio uh, at IMEC. Um, I will show how we can use this testbed, how we can access it and deploy uh, your own uh, GNU radio software into it. And then I will uh, show um, the, first, um, pure, uh, the first results of our experiments. So, we see that software-defined radio is popularizing and the cost of the device is become lower and lower and uh, software library uh, like new radio is maturing. Um, I see that there is a lot of interest of uh, SDR in academia, a lot of paper, more and more work, uh, uh, more and more guys are uh, using uh, SDR in academia. And so we would like to use it uh, on our own devices and to put what uh, Academia is doing and to put it into uh, industrial and commercial projects. So we would like to use SDR for fingerprinting, passive authentication like for pairing um, and also localization. So the main uh, application domain that we are targeting is uh, for manufacturing, uh, for um, uh, wireless um, bench um, or wireless uh, robots, auto autonomous vehicle in um, in a warehouse, for instance, and also for uh, drone. So we would like to authenticate this device wh while they are um, communicating, and also localize localize them and to authenticate them according to the lo localization. So for instance, if you have uh, an autonomous vehicle that is uh, moving into a warehouse, we would like to allow it to communicate and to send data and leave it at uh, a precise uh, localization. So we go to uh, the paper and go to the state of the art and we see that there are relevant papers that is already uh, achieving quite similar tool uh, and quite similar research. And the last one uh, is from uh, the lab where I did my PhD and we have some guys that's from uh, our team, Thibaut Vial, that also contribute to one of, the, of this paper. But however, all of, the, all of this uh, paper uh, does not, do not study uh, real-world IoT devices. Most of them doesn't rely on um, conventional communication protocols. Uh, some of them are not reproducible. Uh, Other provide dataset, but it is too small to then uh, study them um, re reliably. Other uh, study finger, fingerprinting, but the node doesn't move, so we can't uh, learn localization. And we, so we would like to do our own experiments using uh, off-the-shelf devices, and we need uh, a wide, a large test bed, and to collect enough data and do it in a reproducible way. So we go through um, the different test beds that are uh, available, remote test bed, open test bed, and we see that there is uh, the Fed for Fire Plus test bed, and that is a research project uh, for, uh, that offers a federation of different kinds of test bed across uh, all the U Europe. 
and they also offer um, a continuous uh, call for SME, so they provide a small funds uh, to allow SME uh, to access the test bed, provide feedback, and uh, do their own experiments on the test beds. So there are different kind of test beds that are part of the Fed for Fire Federation, and uh, so different kinds: so wireless test bed, IoT test bed, City Lab test bed. Uh, also big data, HPC test bed, and ro cognitive radio test beds. And the one that uh, particularly interests us is the wireless iLab test bed that is close to Bruxelles. Um, that it, it provides uh, IoT node, wireless node, cognitive radio node, uh, software defined radio, and a lot of stuff that we could use. So here is a um, um, a picture of the wireless uh, iLab testbed. So it's kind of a big warehouse where sensor and wireless node are put across uh, the building. So there are two testbeds in fact. Uh, the first one is the wireless iLab one. It's mostly uh, focused on sensor uh, IoT devices. And the second one more focused on the software different radio and they also have Wi-Fi sensor uh, LTE devices so you can also can um, put your own device into it you can use it for uh, LTE research you can put your own uh, base station into it and use uh, the hardware that is already in place and that's this one that we will um, use because there are uh, robots, there are uh, USRP and a lot of devices that we'll show you a bit later. So for the device that they are, uh, the, for the IoT device that uh, are deployed in the building, so they are Zolertia with 2.5 gigahertz with ultra, ultra wide bands. There are also Zigbee and there are also some other kind of sensor uh, from the Nordic Semiconductor, but it's on only on the wireless iLab 1 and not on the wireless iLab 2. And about uh, software-defined radio devices, uh, there are different kind of USRP and also FPGA. And all of these devices can be remotely programmed and you can access them remotely. And so, in fact, each node uh, is connected to um, a kind of laptop. Um, it's usually an Intel NOC uh, with an embedded uh, PC, and you can uh, SSH to, to this node, to this PC, and then access the node. There are also different uh, nodes that are mobile, they are put into a robot, and you can control uh, the trajectory of, uh, of the node. So you can uh, collect data and send data while you are moving uh, the wireless nodes. So here is a map of the different nodes that are um, th that are located across uh, the building. And uh, you can see there are different kind of nodes and you can select each node. Uh, so how you can access uh, these nodes? So first time you can request, uh, create an account uh, on uh, this web page on the iLab um, authority, authority, so it's open and I think that you can just subscribe to it and fill the form and uh, they will probably ask you for the reason you want an account, what is your project and then they will uh, approve the account and you can access the testbed. Um, the next step is to browse the available device and to book, to book them, so you basically pick the devices that you want and you select them and you reserve the nodes during the time you want. And then uh, on, they provide the software to access uh, then the nodes, that is GFIT, so you install it, uh, you log in, you select the node that you, you are and you can uh, then you crea create the experiment, so you select the node, you set up uh, the image so that you want to install, that you want to deploy, and then uh, you can access uh, to, the, to, the, to a shell to a remote cell through SSH. So for about our experiment, so we use um, the mobile node 
and the Nexus 6P device, the smartphone that is on the robot, uh, because we can uh, put in into it our own application. So we create an application that is broadcasting uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth advertising packets. Uh, and um, we then um, collect uh, the data using software defined radio using this USRP. And we build um, um, a basic um, um, uh, new radio application to collect the IQ data to create our data sets and we also rely on Belladumped uh, project uh, that is um, um, an open source uh, code that is um, demotulate, demotulating Bluetooth advertising and collect uh, them and so you can use it uh, then to, uh, into Wireshark. So here is a basic uh, flow graph so you see that we uh, put first the IQ data into uh, row 5 for further processing to create our data sets. And uh, on the same time, we demodulate the data and um, create the packet. So we have two outputs. First, the row IQ data and f the second, um, the, um, the, the advertising packet into a pickup. So now about the scenario of experimentation. So first, uh, we have the USRP that is receiving the data and the smartphone that is advertising. The smartphone can move and the USRP, the receiver, is fixed. Um, we uh, then um, use uh, sequentially uh, the different emitter and um, at the same position with the same receiver and then we move them and we can use different receiver. And finally, we can use a different smartphone at the same time to collect advertising for different devices at the same time. So here is a capture of the test bed uh, while, we are, while we are running the experiments. So we can access uh, to a live camera to see what's happened in the test bed. And here is some picture of um, um, the recording of the data and uh, we display the pickup. Uh, into Wireshark. And I think that's above, it's uh, the remote shell uh, that's connected to the, to the smartphone. So about the next step, we will uh, open source everything and write the communication so everybody will be able to uh, reproduce this experiment and improve it. Um, we will also publish our data sets and put everything into Zenodo. Um, and then we will try different kind of FR, RF uh, protocol like uh, Zigbee and maybe ultra right bonds. Um, and we also will use extensively the robots to move uh, all these nodes. Um, now we have created uh, a data set. So the <laughs> next step is to rely on another kind of test bed that is a virtual lab, that is a data center with <coughs> GPU. And we will, would, would like to do some machine learning uh, with the data set to finger, fingerprint uh, the device, to identify its devices, and also to localize them. Uh, and uh, I think that's, that's it. And uh, we will also participate in the stage two of the experiment that is another kind of funding that is providing by the testbed. And if you are also interested in participating to, to this project, you can uh, apply for, for funding. I, I think that you will be happy to, to have, their, uh, have your own experiments uh, into it and provide feedback to, to them. So uh, before ending, um, I would like to thank uh, first, uh, the team uh, at the wireless iLab that is uh, supporting us during the experiment. Um, also, the, our team at Ayrton. Uh, we are, in fact, three guys uh, working on this project. And if you want to follow uh, our updates uh, about this project, we will probably move to uh, the European GNU Radio Days uh, in June in France. I think that uh, there is a lot of advertising about this event during uh, the, the dev room and during this first dev, but uh, we will be uh, happy to, to meet you there. So I think that it's time for questions, feedback, comments, and I will be happy to, to have your 
uh, your feedback about this pro project. Yeah. Uh, did you any kind of direction finding uh, how it's implemented? But the SDR you show only has two errors in it. Like, do you have this SDR direction finding of the IT device? Um, you direction mean. Finding. Do you know where the IT device is located? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And how did, did you do it with only two inputs on the, on the radio you use? Two inputs on the. The, the USMP you show that only two errors inputs. Is this enough for direction finding? So how, how does the localization work? Yeah, um, in fact, we are uh, using um, the IQ data yeah, for, for that. <laughs> so in fact, uh, because we, um, we, move the, we can move all the nodes, we can move them across all the, all the, um, uh, all the building. So applying machine learning into that, um, the fingerprint is different according to the, posi uh, the localization into the building. So it's not, we don't do tr triangulation or engulf of arrival or something like that. Yeah. We, we don't need to have um, MIMO or um, antenna array at the receiver for, for that. Can you uh, repeat louder, please? Uh, so for phase two of your project with your server, <coughs> um, what kind of architecture are you looking to go for in the software? So if I want to write some algorithms, how, is there any framework that you provide to help with that? For, uh, for doing what? For so the you, have, you have your stack of servers at the end there, presumably to do some um, IQ data processing, right? Yeah. Uh, do you provide any software framework uh, to assist with that process? Not yet, no, not yet, in fact, yeah. Question yeah. Here. Uh, do you plan on uh, uh, fingerprinting sub sensors? sub sensors? I think that it's uh, on, the, on, the, on our world map, because there are some uh, sensors in the, um, uh, I think uh, it's a hundred, a eight hundred uh, uh, megahertz. So I think that we can try try it. Yep. Do you plan any real world validation of your results afterwards? Because your results may be very specific to the environment that you're testing. Yeah. Um, it's uh, on the second. We just would like to. We just the next step is to develop algorithm and everything and validate it in the test bed and then sure we our goal is to move it to the real world. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, let's uh, thank Alex again. Yeah. Thank you.